Good evening, YouTubers, fellow reloaders, and enthusiasts. The next couple videos are going to be about a combination of what you see here uh, because of a focus on this particular CZ. This is a CZ97B chambered in 45 ACP. And I love this. This is a tack driver. But what I don't love is the double action. Oh, and just to, so the, the goobs who freak out over loaded versus unloaded don't freak out. Uh, I'm not a fan, the biggest fan, of the double action trigger. It's a relatively heavy trigger at 9.5 plus pounds, 9.5, 10 pounds. And in single, it's about 4.5 to 5 pounds, but a lot of travel, a lot of travel, and I can't... Uh, and then the reset is really, really far as well. So uh, I jumped online and I started poking around for uh, trigger spring kits and whatnot. And there is a dearth of options for the CZ97 as opposed to the plethora of options for the CZ75 uh, and 9mm. So uh, this particular video is not so much about this cz but this cz is driving the next couple of videos so i will throw that off to the side and uh, i thought to myself when i started looking at spring kits and when you see the prices of some of the trigger spring kits and whatnot they're across the board for uh cost and and uh and parts meaning uh relatively inexpensive to quite expensive and one of the things uh that got me thinking was all right um is my janky old mechanical trigger pull measuring method accurate versus say an electronic version a digital version of this so uh, like anyone else i looked online and uh, the two big uh, uh versions of the digital a trigger pull uh, mechanism is the uh, Lyman and the Wheeler. And depending on who you talk to and what video you you watch, pros and cons of each. Uh, but then I thought, you know, I've got this janky old thing I've had for years, and it's done the job. Uh, you know, is it accurate? Accurate enough for me. Uh, again, I'm not into pre precision anything, so um, do I need to spend the, you know, 50 to $60 on the digital version of this? So then I got to thinking, well, how accurate is my analog version? Because it's very simplistic, you know, you uh, reset this band, which and the top of the band is the actual weight uh, of the uh, trigger pull. So when you pull this for the trigger, that pulls the particular corresponding band down and then the trigger release obviously releases that and then you just read where this band lies. Uh, the interesting thing is when I was watching folks do the same thing with the digital, the digital scales vary as much as this does uh, in terms of, oh, one readout was 6.2 ounces, the other reading was 5.9 ounces. You know, again, you're not going to get, based on what I've seen, uh, super consistent, meaning, oh, I have 6.3 ounce trigger pulls every single time. So again, I grabbed a weight. This is an ankle weight. This is a five pound weight. And I thought, all right, let me run a few tests and see how accurate, let's get some, let's get a little lip going here, how accurate this particular uh, weight is. So I've got my band all the way up top, as you can see, and I'm going to lift this weight just enough to clear the bench. And then I'm going to set it back down and then I'm going to look. And as you can see, that comes in right at five. So five pounds. Let me do it like three times because I'm sure there's going to be some variation. Uh, and that looks like it's four and three quarter, just under five. Another one at that's closer to four and a half. Maybe I need to lift it up higher. And that's another one at almost a little over four and three quarters, but not quite on the five pound line. Try and get some meat, some meat in here. 
right, so that's about as centered as I can get it. And that's coming in again past four and three quarter, but not quite five, closer to five. So I'm going to say that uh, this is reasonably accurate for my needs. Uh, and that one looks like it's right on five. Yeah. So I'm going to say this is accurate enough for me, meaning it's not wildly inaccurate and uh, it's relatively consistent, again, for my needs. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to measure the trigger pull on this particular firearm in single action. and It's unloaded. Unloaded. So we're going to measure this in single action. Uh, looks like five and a half. Uh, that looks like five and a half again. And that looks like right on the five. Do one more, and that looks like right on five, a little over five. So I'm going to say between five and five and a half pounds on uh, and that came in at uh, four and change. And then for the double action, that is just really long, and then the reset is really, really long as well. So um, let's see what we've got for double. Wow. That's coming in at nine and a quarter. That came in at uh, eight and three quarter. That came in at just uh, right at nine. That came in just at nine as well. And that came in at a whopping almost nine and three quarter. And this came in at just over nine. So I'm gonna say eight and a half to nine and a half pound on uh, the double and four and a half to five-ish on the, uh, the single. Yeah. So, um, is it worth spending 50, 60 bucks for similar consistency based on what I've seen online with uh, the tests other people have done? Uh, probably not. Uh, I'm not in enough of, I'm not in any business. Uh, this is a range toy. This is not a, uh, this is not a competition thing. So that level of uh, accuracy or determination for precision isn't there. Um, but my goal would be to uh, reduce that double action as well as a single action and potentially um, some of that travel. So uh, that's that's kind of the focus and the and the desire. But uh, I would say that for the twenty some odd dollars, this was worth it. Uh, and if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I'm a fan of mechanical versus electronic. Uh, there is a, a time and a place for electronic, um, but uh, I don't think I'm dissatisfied enough to uh, to jump on the digital bandwagon for a uh, trigger pull measuring method so i think this suffices for me and what i'm trying to do here so that's it for tonight